are these people? I wanted to bring this because, you know, we're, we're told, uh, especially among people who still deal with electoralism in any capacity that, you know, you, you, it, you, you can't focus on single issues, Colin, you know, <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you people that a lot of these single issues you talk about have overarching ramifications. It's almost like all problems are interconnected. It's almost like that's the case. So I wanted to bring, bring this because it speaks to the surveillance crowd and people who don't want their data taken from them and just Orwellian censorship and all that fun stuff. So, um, incarceration.com trademark, you know, friends of the show, um, writes, Texas is buying Tangles, an AI powered surveillance platform. So you're probably wondering why I would find that important, right? And this is all about border security and all that stuff, which, you know, I've seen a lot of our brothers and sisters go down a weird road when it comes to uh, thoughts on the border. Um, so we're going to get into why they are trying to manipulate your emotions there. So again, Tangles, AI powered surveillance platform created by the IDF in Israel. Funny how that works. That scrapes information from open, deep and dark web. Tangles was created by Cobwebs, a company founded by IDF special ops veteran, was brought to Texas by Governor Abbott, who claims to need this to secure the border, which was used in conjunction with Operation Lone Star, the controversial Texas program of aggressive pursuits of migrants and dangerous desert maneuvers that have cost 17 National Guards their lives on duty for Operation Lone Star. Any, any questions so far, Colin? I feel like just that paragraph alone, a lot of IDF involvement in this, right? So, yeah. and again, scrapes information from the not, open, deep, and dark web. So, it's not just police anymore. It's right. AI tech. No. And I, I don't know if you want anything designed by the IDF scraping your social media right now in Texas. So, right. you know, be careful out there, fam. Um, so the company's weblock has the ability to track different mobile devices whereabouts in a specific virtual area through geofencing. No search warrants are needed to harvest and utilize the data. Cobwebs was founded by Israeli intelligence and sold to US based company Pinlink in November of 2023. Right? Again, all these blue links are Curious. sublinks. Curious so, as to the date. Yes. So go go check go check that out in the description below. I have this article linked. You can click on all these blue sublinks. So especially this Texas Department of Public Safety, that one's important. So um Texas Department of Public Safety finalizes contract for Tangles surveillance tool. ICE, IRS, and DPS have been using Tangles, with DPS having the largest contract of them. Okay. So the Republic of Public Safety plans to spend millions in taxpayer dollars on a controversial software used first as part of Governor Abbott's border crackdown to disrupt political. I'm busy. Cat, we're doing the news. Well, <laughs> I get it. All right. Jesus. <laughs> He's just that yelling at me. So loud, I, I had a cat here. <laughs> it's not, dude. It's just, I all yeah. never hear your cat. I know, man. It's weird. Um, so, web, uh, bro, really? Like, I get it. You want up here? Huh? Are you just being weird? Huh? Oh, fine. You can come do the news, too. I don't care. Oh, so DPS plans to spend millions. Watch the views go up exponentially. <laughs> yeah, just because I have a cat. So Israeli startup specializes in developing cyber intelligence solutions for enforcement bodies, natural security agencies, and financial services worldwide. You good? Okay, bye. Fine. Um, so I brought this, Colin. I wanted to show people like what this could entail. So we're going to watch this video, right? And I do believe this is might have been Miami. So, which, but very similar problems here, 
right? And I want you to look at the ridiculous, like, Batman level nonsense that this will include. So I'm going to change the playback speed a little, and we're going to throw this on it. And we're going to go with that. Cameras in Department of Transportation. I know what's going on right now, any place in this county. Aviation, if they're up, whoever's working, I can click on their camera right now and I can watch their interaction. Can I see it? Live Google. This is a big, big deal. And I'm going to be like Google. So I'm going to show you right now. I can tell you where everybody is, what they're doing. And then I can also bring up, you know, any intersection I want in the county. Okay. Right now. So you're bringing up live CCTV cameras right now? I'm bringing up live cameras. Wow. You have eyes and ears everywhere. Everywhere. But I can go to any intersection and pull it up right now. So if there's a crash, if someone says we're in a pursuit, whatever it might be, it shows me right now. Plus, it shows me every single person working. The stars are where my deputies are. It tells me what they're doing, what they're on, what calls for service. It's important for me to have my finger on the poles constantly. Is a traffic stop right here? So this is, <laughs> this is Deputy Austin. And right now, I can see his body one camera. So it's as if we're That's on insane. scene. We got this county locked down. This so that's the kind of stuff we're dealing with here. So, like, do you remember the Batman movie where Morgan Freeman was like, you need to destroy this? We've used it once, but no one is allowed to have this yep. much power. Like, yes. <laughs> is that not literally like the same setup? Basically. Like, oh, so. One more video. Um, so this is from The Last American Vagabond, which I won't have to do that. Um, but with Whitney Webb, which, you know, we're big fans of hers over here. And she's going to explain why this border crisis thing is being used to promote people like Governor Abbott engaging in these like digital surveillance companies, right? And it goes even deeper than that, unfortunately. So let's start with the, with the article we discussed. We have mentioned this before. We've touched on it. But this is such a really, this point alone is very obvious to anybody that I think is not pulled into one part inside of the other. I mean, obviously, the border, the wall, going from a wall to a, met, met, uh, you know, uh, what, a, survey, what do you, a smart wall is the best way to put it, is an interesting shift yeah. from Trump's perspective, right? And so go ahead and start wherever you'd like on this and why you think this connects to a larger sort of honeypot sort of manipulation discussion. Yeah, so first off, um, the Sustainable Development Goals, also known as Agenda 2030 from the UN, one of the main policy agendas there is to have biometric entry and exit systems for every country. This is being rolled out in lockstep throughout the entire world right now. And this year it's uh, being implemented, I think next month it starts actually being implemented in Europe. Um, for, for foreign travelers entering Europe. Um, the UK rolls it out next year. And of course, there's a big push for to do it in the US and also in other countries. Uh, it's intimately tied up with the whole digital ID uh, mm -hmm. agenda that's been ongoing for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And particularly during the COVID era, as I'm sure you are aware and your audience wow. is aware, um, there was a big push against digital ID and vaccine passports, which were sort of a beta test for the digital ID system uh, during the COVID era. And currently we are seeing an effort to manufacture consent among right-leaning Americans who opposed vaccine passports and digital ID uh, to get them to go along with uh, this biometric entry exit agenda. Uh, that's at its core a globalist agenda um, and also an intelligence linked surveillance agenda. I mean, fundamentally the same at the end of the day, um, but under, you know, different rhetoric. And so essentially what we've had over the past you know, year, right, is a lot of uh, increased attention paid by the media to the situation on the U.S.-Mexico border. It's important to point out that the U.S.-Mexico border for decades and decades has been very insecure. And even though rhetoric has been different between presidents, no president, including Trump, has ever shut down that border. Uh, no one has constructed a physical barrier. Trump campaigned on that, but by 2019 had pivoted away from a physical barrier, what he called at that point, a me medieval wall. No medieval walls, he said. No, we're going to have a smart wall. Yeah. And the smart wall is bio is not a physical wall at all. 
It's, uh, you know, enabled by drones and AI surveillance cameras, surveillance towers uh, that dot the U.S.-Mexico border. And this is actually an effort that precedes Trump significantly. Uh, it was first launched after 9-11 as SBI Net by the newly created DHS. Um, and was relatively unsuccessful because of, uh, I think it was like Boeing and some other, you know, super bloated, corrupt U.S. government contractors that were creating a system owned by the government. And they were, you know, milking money and being incompetent and slow to like make profit as contractors or wow. the big ones, you know, or want to do. And so in comes uh, this new startup by this guy named Palmer Lucky, who was part of the Peter Thiel network. Uh, probably best known Palmer Lucky uh, for creating Oculus Rift, the virtual reality system that was sold to Facebook, which Facebook, again, is a company that was essentially, you know, we think of Mark Zuckerberg as creating it, but it would not exist without Peter Thiel, who was the mm -hmm. person that turned Facebook into the company it is and was on its board for a very long time. So uh, Palmer Lucky, you know, involved with Facebook and then leaves and then Thiel starts funding his defense startup, AI defense startup. Uh, called Anduril, uh, which is tied up with this same network of companies Thiel is responsible for that are contractors uh, to the military and intelligence communities of the U.S., you know, including Palantir, of course, being the main uh, company in that web. But Anduril is intimately connected uh, because of people like Trey Stevens, uh, who's been at Palantir, works for Thiel's Founders Fund. Founders Fund invested in Anduril. Trey Stevens co-created Anduril with Palmer Lucky. Uh, Trey Stevens was also involved with Trump's DOD transition team, uh, which Peter Thiel was also intimately involved in. And Trey Stevens was also on the board and still is on the board of Carbon Carbine 911, which is the 911 emergency system uh, company that was heavily funded by Jeffrey Epstein, uh, basically created by former Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak uh, and Unit 8200 officials to take mm -hmm. over essentially the U.S. 911 uh, 911 call system um, and turn it into like a, a system that has pre-crime and extreme surveillance functionality. So Trey Stevens is involved with that crowd. Uh, and within Carbine 911 is a woman named Latal Lashem, a career Israeli intelligence operative who currently works for Eric Prince of Blackwater fame, who is also very much inserted into uh, this network and, and, you know, the network behind the Trump administration, essentially. Um, so these are, and uh, it's important to point out too, uh, Anderil Palantir, Trey Stevens, Peter Thiel, these guys all have extreme CIA connections, extreme mm -hmm deep state connections. This is the supposed deep state that Trump supporters are supposed to hate. And they are the ones building the smart wall. And this, uh, you know, I would, obviously there's a very insecure and troubling situation on the border, but people only care about it because it's being given extreme media attention and, right. you know, concern about it is being drummed up as a way to manufacture consent for something must be done. And the something that must be done, of course, is the smart wall. And this is being pitched within independent media by people like Brett Weinstein on Tucker Carlson, uh, being pitched by people like Colonel Douglas McGregor, who also, I believe, uh, had some sort of advisory role in the Trump administration. Um, and unfortunately, you know, the smart wall is not something that's going to promote individual liberty or freedom. It is this exact same UN uh, biometric entry and exit system that depends heavily on digital ID. So, any questions, Care Bear? Oh, Whitney spits a lot out of people. Up? So, um, you know, yeah. I, so, the only the only thing that I get from a lot of these people who talk about it, and I know Whitney doesn't have this problem; she gets it. But uh, you know, this idea of the the border being insecure as a problem in and of itself, right? Right. You know, to me, you talk about individual freedoms. It shouldn't matter what imaginary lines there are, you know, but that to me is one thing as just a humanist by nature. I find that a little odd. Right. I get that there's some resources that our country wants to keep ours. Right. But, you know, at the end of the day, I, I don't think the kind of actions when in regard to that border security are very necessary. You know, I think dealing with the underlying problems that cause that influx of immigration and whatever. Now, from what I've heard, that that number has been going down. 
you know yeah. and it's like more people are leaving the border to go to mexico than they are you know and not mentioning all the immigration that doesn't happen at a border at all right you know like any of the immigration from europe or any of the other places that you know you got to get on a jet plane to get over here so i don't know i'm not an expert in any of that stuff so well it's the idea mm -hmm. of we don't have enough programs for people if for whatever reason they need to come here that yeah. they're able to come here legally right and to you me, know, the answer to immigration is make it easier to immigrate legally, and you don't have as many problems with that. Right. So, In the same way, that, and people like, you know, call me a child of God, like everything about a child of God, because I am a black immigrant, but I'm a U.S. citizen. Right. And I came here legally. Like, yeah. I was very fortunate, like, given the means that at that time, and I was a child, that I was able to immigrate here legally as a permanent resident and that was the pathway for me to become a citizen leader yeah so and like there needs to be but again the core issue and i said this on savvy's uh panel like i think it's over a month ago now um we don't talk about why are immigrants willing to come over here in the well, first place what right. usually the problem is well they're uh, they took in our they took our germs right but not any talk about why they've outsourced your job out of the country to other places like germany just lost their volkswagen plant to it being sent to mexico like and then they blame the immigrant right like that's classic right. Classic problems with that. So uh, you know, right. but given our coups and sanctions on all these countries, especially in Latin America, like they're stifled, <laughs> and then they're willing to come here and work. Like, well, you want to talk about for foreign intervention, for crappy wages, because relatively it's more than probably that they were getting in their countries now given the sanctions that we put in well, those countries to begin with. Drug wars, that, political instability we've caused, like, our, our globalist, like, problems, which, to me, in an ideal society, a global government, to me, wouldn't be a problem if particular safety nets and stuff are put in place. Having said that, I don't trust any of those people with power to actually make good decisions there. So... Right. Uh, but I, I did want to focus on this uh, aspect of, of a lot of these foreign problems are interconnected with domestic problems, right? If you're worried about a censorship and surveillance here, you need to be worried about what's happening elsewhere. So there's a reason why Israelis come over here and train our police force, because they know how to oppress well. That clearly is the thing. And... We, we've shown right. time and time again how they use things like WhatsApp and digital ways of surveillance over there and AI targeting and all that stuff. So, you know, I think Whitney gets more direct with who's part of the cause here in this country, right? You know, particularly millionaires and billionaires who have their best interest to try to control the population uh, are willing to do these things. So in the, you know, guise of of forward movement you know so and like my issue is not with the technology it's with how it's being used and manipulated by you know moneyed powers as it tends to be you know so but yeah i just thought it was thought it was interesting to bring but talking about these things is why we're demonetized. You can go to codashfee.com slash network or scan that QR code on your screen or use the exclamation mark donate command in the chat and Nightbot will send you a little link to that. But if you can't give monetarily, we understand. We just, you know, ask you to help try to get the word out. Like and subscribe, share this stream. You know, we're heavily suppressed as you might, as you might think. But leave a comment. Let us know what you think. You know, how, how do you feel about that stuff? 
and you know help us get to 3k we're we're getting there but otherwise thanks for watching